Have you experimented or tried the AI that's out there these days, the basic ones, the free ones? I'm Amy Wegman, and as the kids head back to school, mine included, I started to wonder if, how, when they should be using artificial intelligence in the classroom. I mean, take a look. Places like ChatGPT, they can literally write an article in a matter of seconds. For example, let's try this. Write me a third grade level paper, one page, about why cats are better than dogs. Enter, five seconds, it spits it out. Or maybe your kid has a pre-algebra question they don't know the answer to. No problem, you just pull out an app like Photomath, take a picture, and it spits out the answer. You can even see the steps. I met up with Professor Chris Ann Reilly from FGCU. She's an AI ethicist and is well versed on the technology. For kids back in school and even teachers navigating this new world, here's her take. It's really critical that students develop a level of AI literacy. I think it's going to become an integral part of what we do on a daily basis. Not taking over and replacing our work, she says AI should be a partner. At the university level, she encourages students to use AI as a tool. But if your child's younger, high school or middle school, knowing the rules is gonna be key. When students walk into the classroom, they need to develop clarification from the teacher. What is appropriate to use and what should we not use? And really says, beware. If you think you can have AI spit something out and the teacher won't notice, think again. It has its own style. It, in many cases, it is void of the human elements. It's missing the curiosity. It misses a sense of humor. It misses the emotional intelligence, which is so important. Okay, to her point, let's go back to that article I asked AI to write about why cats are better than dogs. It spit out some really good points. Cats clean themselves, they're quiet because they don't bark, they're more independent. But here's the thing, it lacks the human emotion. Most third graders would probably say whether they like cats or dogs better, maybe include their own cat or dog story, but AI can't do that for them. I reached out to Southwest Florida school districts to see what their rules are when it comes to AI. Lee County has included it in the code of conduct. It's not outright banned. Instead, it says there's considerable potential for AI to be used in an innovative manner in the instructional setting. However, plagiarism, including plagiarism using AI, cannot be permitted. The biggest thing, really says, kids need to understand AI's shortcomings if they decide to use it. So there are some inherent issues around bias, around um, algorithms, making decisions. There are privacy considerations. There are also societal impacts. Students need to be fully aware of those elements when they decide to step out and start utilizing AI. Not to mention, since it will likely be around for the long haul, she says parents need to remind kids how important it is to grow their own skills first before leaning on AI, especially when it comes to writing. There is tremendous benefit in developing your own writing style, your own critical thinking skills, your own communication style. Your own style, not overshadowed by technology. Amy Wegman, Fox 4. And yes, this is generated by AI. I know, it's kind of creepy.